Over the course of all of my coursework, internships, clinical studies, one theme remained consistent, and that's asking the question, why? It's so easy to fall into the rhythm of your day-to-day -day life, and I've seen this time and time again. Especially if you have been treating the same diagnoses for a while, it's so easy to go with the same treatment and the same cookie-cutter exercises for everybody. Oh, you have back pain? Do some isometric core exercises. Planks, dead bugs, transverse abdominus activation, posterior pelvic tilt. Oh, you have knee pain? Do some quad sets, heel slides, some glute activation. There's nothing wrong with these exercises. And I'm not saying not to do them because I think there's value in general resistance training. And most importantly, patients just get better over time. Check out my Does Posture Even Matter video to learn more about long-term outcomes with core stabilization exercises. Spoiler alert, it seems like generic aerobic exercises work just as well as traditional core exercises. But oftentimes I think it's more important to specify why and relay that specific message back to the patient, how it will specifically benefit that patient. Not only will this improve your clinical reasoning, it will also improve your patient buy-in. For example, if you have a patient with general back pain that gets worse with extension and load, educate the patient on why they're doing a specific exercise. So you can explain to the patient, based on what we found, it seems like you're more sensitive to load and you're more sensitive when your back is in extension, so in a more straighter position. So these exercises are more anti-extension because in the plank, gravity is pulling your spine down. And with dead bugs, the weight of your legs is the resistance that you're going against. So by doing exercises like planks and dead bugs, you can increase your body's tolerance to these positions because both of these exercises are stressing your body into a more extension position and gradually you're gonna be able to strengthen up and tolerate more load I think once you stop asking the question why that's also when you stop growing as a clinician and I think it can easily happen at clinics that do a lot of manual therapy I've heard stories of some clinics have patients come in to get a hot pack for 15 minutes ease them for 15 minutes massaged and they're out the door. These type of clinics are also known as stim gyms. To me, that's selling your PT degree short. So you went through all that schooling to become a doctorate of physical therapy just so you can mindlessly massage people. Becoming a massage therapist would have saved you a lot of time and a lot of money. I feel like not only is that selling your PT degree short, but it's also selling the whole profession short because we're so much more than just mindless manual therapy. Thankfully, I've never worked at one of these places before, but I've heard stories from peers. It scares me how people end up working at these so-called stim gyms. If you're putting hot pack, e-stim, and poking around where it hurts on every single person who comes into your clinic, how are you using your clinical skills? Where is the clinical reasoning behind that? What is the why? Especially in places where modalities are heavily used, whether it be ultrasound, Easton, cold packs, hot packs, lasers. Because quite frankly, a lot of the research on these modalities are of low quality and they're often so filled with conflicts of interest. Patients are becoming like drug addicts. They come in with a quick hit of symptom relief and they're out the door. Talk about creating dependency. The whole goal of physical therapy is to empower patients to take control of their own health and getting patients back to what they want to do. So if you're a patient and you're going back to a clinic week after week, getting the same exercises, same ultrasound, same e-stim, same hot pack, time and time again, that's probably not a good sign. I think as clinicians, it's important to bring it back to the why and relay that message clearly to the patient to their goals. Why are they doing this specific exercise? How will this help them with gardening? But we also have to be careful of becoming too wordy, yapping on and on about neurobiology, pain science, exercises, how this will target specific muscle because it can really overwhelm the patient. And maybe the patient doesn't even care. So you have to be careful about yapping on and on and on and on and on and on. So it comes back to building a rapport with patients. Really listen and read their body language to see how much knowledge you should drop on the patient. You can even ask patients, would you like to learn more about blank? This is definitely easier said than done because we're so eager to help patients and we wanna talk about how we can help them. So always going back to the why. Why are you doing this specific intervention? How does it help your patient? All right, thanks for listening. My purpose with all this is to bring up a discussion. So let me know what you think and there's more to come.